Hickok 45 here, and there's a snake in my holster. Yes, of the Colt variety. <laughs> Colt Cobra. It was a Cobra. Wow, Cobras are dangerous. And that could be, couldn't it? Pretty cool, the new Colt Cobra. They used to make these back, I think, from 1950 to about 1980. But as you know, Colt went out of the revolver making business. And this one is just out as I speak today. And it's just a great time. You know, uh, as I've mentioned before in the firearms world, because you have all these cool guns, you know, coming out, all these cool choices uh, in revolvers, semi-automatics and everything. And it's great to see Colt back in the snake game again. You know, they have the Diamondbacks and the Anaconda, the Python, the Cobra, and what are the others? I don't know, there were several. And they haven't made one of these in a long time. I think it's been about 20 years. Now, we all hope they'll jump on on a python don't we you know or an anaconda and all those but at least for now we've got the cobra back and i think from my reading they're focusing on this format right now and we might we're more likely than to see one of those other snakes return we're more likely to see other variations of the cobra i think for now i wouldn't be surprised if there was a 357 magnum you know down the road this one's 38 you know plus p but I would guess 357 maybe, maybe it'll be out in different barrel lengths. I don't know. Maybe I'd like to see it in uh, this configuration, you know, the Centennial type that Smith has with a concealed hammer. That would be pretty cool. Because one of the big differences here is, I'll go ahead and, and show you, you know, we love our J-frame, right, Smiths. And I love the concealed hammers. This is one of my favorite types of revolvers for concealed carry uh, or even pocket carry. Uh, it's just wonderful. And that one's all steel. It's not my 642, but it's the same size. Um, but, you know, you got to get rid of that hammer spur, you know, to do that really well. And I don't know if this would be a pocket carry or not, but uh, it's, it's pretty good size for pocket. And you can see how, you know, it's just a little bigger than a J frame. So, not as big as a K frame, Smith, but it's bigger than a J frame. But you got, you can't cheat physics. If you're going to have six shots, you got to have a bigger cylinder. And you see there, there's no uh, extra steel there. It's not like, well, you could have made that cylinder a lot smaller. No, you really couldn't probably. So you've got to have this size uh, to have six shots pretty much. And this is about the size of the old Colt Detective Specials. And, uh, you know, as far as the cylinder and the width and everything, it's just midway, I guess you'd say, between the J-frame and the K-frame, if you're familiar with those frame sizes. And we have a video on Smith & Wesson frame sizes. Um, the Colts are a little bit different. Uh, a lot of the Colts are more like the Python. I think is more like an L-frame Smith. So I won't confuse you right now on that. But anyway, this this gun just came out recently. As I talk about it, we're going to burn some of this nice Federal ammo. We appreciate their help. Uh, we're going to shoot some Plus P uh, 38 Special. Uh, maybe just some regular old uh, round nose lead bullets. It's kind of neat. Old classic 38 Special. Yeah. It's neat that Federal still loads those things. You know, they offer those. Because that was like the bullet for decades and decades. Just an old round nose bullet. And if you're just plinking on the range, what difference does it make? You don't need hollow points. Unless you're me and you're demonstrating stuff. You know, maybe. <laughs> what, what am I demonstrating? I don't know. <laughs> what is these? Oh, yeah. These are some bullets, uh, cartridges with no, no uh, lead in them. You think? These are actually semi-wad cutters. I don't know if all of you are familiar with those. Those are kind of, at least in the old days, uh, they're kind of old school target rounds. They're usually light loads and they're like cookie cutters. If you really want to see, you know, get a cookie cutter pattern on your paper target, you can't beat that because they're like using a paper punch generally. Maybe we'll shoot a couple of them over here. Why don't we just go ahead and do it and see if we get that. Uh, I don't know if the way our paper is hanging makes a difference, if what's behind it or anything like that. I haven't fired a, a wad cutter in a long time. Now I was going to show you the speed loader. This is a speed loader from Model 10 Smith & Wesson. I can tell because it has a 10 on it. Pretty smart, huh? And uh, we'll load the speed loader if you've ever seen how you do that. Well, I just yeah, pop them in there. All six. And turn it. Okay, so they stay. All right. Now these not being pointed are going to be a little bit more of a problem you know, getting in maybe. There we go. 
Okay, not bad. So a, a Smith & Wesson K-frame, a Model 10 speed loader. Looks like it works on this, okay. All right, so these are cookie cutters. Let's cut some cookies. All right, Colt Cobra. Okay, I guess they cut well enough. So, uh, pretty neat, pretty neat. I hadn't seen those in a long time, and I noticed that uh, Federal had those offered on their site, so I ordered a couple boxes. So if you need some <laughs> some wide cutters, or you think those are interesting, they actually are still being loaded. Pretty neat. Uh, a lot of people back in the early 70s, when I got into hand loading, were loading those. And I don't know, I, I didn't ever did shoot paper that much, so I, I wasn't as interested in them, but I did load some of those. Let's shoot some of these pointed bullets in it. Uh, before I do that, let me show you a couple things about it. I don't have an old Colt Cobra to, to compare with, but a lot of you are not probably as interested in that as you are as, you know, what kind of firearm is it now? What's it look like? What's it compare with now? So that's kind of more of a focus, I guess. Well, this one is all steel. I think the originals were had an alloy frame. So this one's gonna weigh a little more, about 25 ounces. And, but it's a nice solid revolver. It's great to have Colt back making these, and it feels good. It feels like what you'd expect from Colt. It feels solid, the lockup, uh, just a good solid revolver. Uh, a lot of people making revolvers now, but you know, it's hard to beat a good old Colt or Smith & Wesson, and, and of course there's other companies too. Uh, they extended the grip backward, rearward a little bit more, so you've got a little bit of different feel. It's, it's unloaded here, no matter if it's not, but it, it feels good to me, with my hand, I'll have to say. As I understand, the trigger's a little straighter. I don't have an, an old one to compare with. A little bit bigger trigger guard. So if you got gloves, you know, a little bit easier to use there. Uh, you've got a replaceable sight up here. You just use an Allen wrench and you can replace the fiber optic there or I think the entire sight without too much trouble. Put a night sight on or whatever you like. They really thought uh, about this before they brought it back, it appears. They wanted to make, it looks like a, a really useful revolver, not just bring back the Colt Cobra for nostalgia's sake. You know. So uh, you've got the rampant Colt on there, shows you it's Colt, it's ready for plus P. The originals did not have the uh, underlug, full length underlug on the barrel, I don't believe. They've kind of contoured it down, I guess to save some weight there. So it looks like you've got a bulge there. You've got the standard Colt action there, which I don't like as well as the Smith & Wesson. You have to pull on it. It's not quite as uh, intuitive, but you know, it works. And uh, your cylinder rotates clockwise, opposite of a Smith & Wesson, if you didn't know that. So it's pretty cool. It just seems really, really solid. Uh, the finish is kind of a matte you know, finish there, kind of a, like a bead blast, as you can probably tell. What else about it? Nice healthy trigger guard and, and space there. Uh, feels good. Nice little groove there to locate your front sight through. Uh, and again, holds six shots. That's a that's a biggie. Because so many little revolvers are five shot revolvers. I love these little J frames, but they hold five rounds. You know, it's just not much you can do about physics. Let's take a couple more shots with it. It now it's not cheap. But you know, for a Colt, when you look at the prices, you hear us talk about prices, sometimes we forget, or we, we want you to use Google and look them up. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, sometimes prices are just amazing. I will have a revolver in here, and it's some Ruger or Smith, and I look at the MSRP and it's 1100, really? Yeah, I remember when you could get any revolver for three or $400, and it doesn't seem like it's that long ago. They're just expensive, but this is, I think, 699 MSRP, Folks in Kentucky, that's almost 700. Uh, so probably on the street, well, not on the street really, but you know, in your local shop or wherever online, I would guess it'd be closer to, to six, I don't know. Uh, but it's a Colt, okay? And whether you like Colt or not, I tell you one thing that anybody who's been uh, messing with firearms for a long time will tell you, uh, if it's got Colt on it, it will maintain its value much better than a lot of others. You know, Colt or Smith & Wesson, any name brand, uh, well-known quality brand firearm, and especially Colt, it just holds its value better than uh, a lot of other firearms. So, And plus it's well-made. You don't wanna buy something just because it doesn't depreciate as fast. Well, I haven't shot anything. Look at all these targets. Let's just start working on a couple of them. 
<laughs> I can't afford to miss. Yeah, can't miss too much. Woo! <laughs> Besides, Homeland Security has me under surveillance again. It's just a revolver. No NFA paperwork necessary, right? Uh, at least yet. And depending on what state you're in. I don't know about maybe in New York, you do have to have a special uh, a license to buy one of these. Well, it's just hold six, so it should be okay. And that's one of the neat things about a revolver. I've, I've talked about that. Uh, but not for you brand new folks. You know, we have a lot of new folks coming in all the time and I sometimes forget that. But you know, the fact you've got your magazine as part of the firearm, it, it's just kind of neat. And you just put your ammo in there, you know, and inject your cases. Uh, if you've not enjoyed the pleasures of a revolver, you know, get at it because it is it's just neat. If you're a firearms person, you need to have a revolver on your list. I know I'm always admonishing you about that, but you just, you just need one. They're, they're a lot of fun to shoot. A lot of people still carry them. They'll even smoke pot. I'm going to tell you, look at that smoke. Yeah. You can bowl with them. Yeah. There's another bowling pin. <laughs> I had to move that uh, obstruction. Yeah, it was in my way. All right, we have one round left. Let's spin it. Okay, now where do we put it? Were you listening, class? Yes. Cylinder spins clockwise. So right there should do it. Let's see if it does. Boom. That's right. You need to know that if you have one round left. See? And you're in a, a running engagement or something. You'd want to know. Okay? So we thought the sun was gone, so we're going to get a little bit of sun here. Put a little light on the subject. I need a little enlightenment probably. Let's put some of these lead ones back in here. Let's go on across the hill a little bit. I'm not sure which ones are better to throw over there. Let's see if it's gong worthy. See if Colt made a gong worthy revolver. <sighs> I'll blame it on Colt if I miss. Pretty lame, huh? See, that's Colt's fault. Let's hold up a little more. Let's hold down a little bit. Well, let's try again. Let's see, I'm going to hold down even further. <laughs> well, it looks like there's some hits on it. A couple of hits on it, John. I uh, couldn't hear it. Let me try. Uh, I, I took a shot earlier with some of these at the red plate and actually, you know, was hitting the red plate. So I don't know what the deal is on the gong. Maybe I'm hitting, I can't hear it. Let me try a, okay. Let me try the red plate again. Uh. Try the gong. Okay, let me try something closer. I can't hit anything over there. There we go. Click. I might be flinching a little bit because I was actually hitting before. So I do need to go. Do I? Am I shooting low, John? A little bit low. Okay. I'll bring her up some. Let's get another box of this uh, plus P. I like plus P, by the way, for a uh, 38, if it'll handle it. Uh, really, because if you have a really short barrel, you're not getting all the ballistic, uh, all the ballistical power out of a 357 Magnum anyway. And so, so don't make fun of plus P. Plus P is a, is a nice round. Okay, so John says I'm going low. I'm going to bring it up. On the gong. I think I'm going high. 
I think I'm shooting blanks. Let's shoot uh, a hole in the bottom. I want to see it in the dirt, if nothing else. Ah, oh, I heard that one. Okay. All right. Okay, so I just need to bring it down a little bit. Uh, let me try the red plate again. Let's go ahead and try a pig. I can see the misses easier on a pig. There we go. You also see the hits. <laughs> I knew, see, you knew I wasn't lying. I don't lie to you folks. I, uh, I picked it up with some of this plus P stuff and I popped that red plate a couple of times and I shot stuff here locally and I've been shooting it for a couple of days off and on. And, okay, I know where to hold, I thought, but maybe I didn't. Maybe, uh, well, I was shooting these at the, at the gong first there, I guess when I was missing, but uh, I see some hits I think I just didn't hear too. So who knows, you all can tell. The camera never lies. But we learn together sometimes on these things. It, it seems very, I uh, hate to use the word accurate, but uh, I have hit well with it enough to, to know it, it hits right where I want it to hit, pretty much. Uh, now, out there at distance, sometimes I'm surprised, but let's try, uh, if I can keep from flinching, another two liter. <laughs> Sweet. Mr. Cowboy has not been addressed. Yeah, that's right where I was holding. Yeah, right there. The windage on the sights is right on, which is a good thing because they're kind of fixed sights, you know. Oh, let's try that uh, piece of cinder block there, the top part at least. Yeah, plus P. Okay. Oh, oh, look. There's a bird. There's a bird sitting by that two liter. Let's give him a bath. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Pigeon. Couldn't resist. Click. All right. I have to get used to the feel of it a little bit, but uh, I, I, I really kind of like it, I have to say. You know, I'm kind of a revolver person anyway, and uh, I mean, I like revolvers. I like everything, don't I? Uh, one of my favorite revolvers of all time as a potential, I'm making a mess here today, aren't I? One of my favorite revolvers of all time is this Model 65. You've seen the videos on it. If not, look them up. There's two or three videos on the Model 65. This is a great carry gun. But you know, I was telling John here before we started, if I'm gonna, this is a holster gun, and I kind of look at this new Cobra as a holster gun too. It'd be an awfully large pocket gun. Uh, so, if you're gonna carry it in a holster, like this one will fit. This holster is actually for a bigger frame, I think, but. Yes, yeah, so you got that gun. That's a nice gun, but it's whatever, six or eight ounces heavier than this new Colt Cobra, for example, that also could be packed in a holster like that. And if it feels good to you, and with that extended grip where they brought that back a little bit, it, it feels really good. I, uh, once I get it figured out and shoot it some more, it, now this one, of course, goes back to E-Gunner, but uh, it's a revolver I could enjoy carrying. Uh, because it's smaller and lighter than that one and if you've carried much you know what ounces mean all right i know it sounds like a lot or it sounds like we're overreacting to a few ounces but if you have packed firearms i don't have to explain it to you if you've never packed firearms uh, sorry but you just don't really understand yet okay it's not that you can't lift it it's just that it pulls on your belt more and more but this thing is, is pretty sweet. You got the same firepower, the same cartridges. And when I carry this, I carry plus P. I don't even carry full, full house magnums. I carry plus P, the same ammo, same software. So the only difference is I have an inch less of barrel on, the, on this. This would be nice, uh, two and a half, maybe three inch barrel. Maybe they'll do that. It was pretty good. All right, let's put some more ammo in it. What else about it that I failed to tell you? Uh, Probably a lot of things, right? Well, like I say, the Colt Cobra, they quit making those snake revolvers, any revolvers back, you know, I guess it was the 80s, early 80s. And these were made for about 30 years, 50 to 80, long in there. And uh, very popular, you know, these little Colt revolvers were pretty popular, partly because they held six rounds. You know, the J-frames have always been popular because they're smaller, good old pocket gun and that kind of thing. But uh, these were just a little step up with six rounds. So that was, that was their claim to fame, the detective special and these. 
so it's a it's a nice revolver it's great to have them back um, I, I I don't have a lot to not like about it and believe me I would tell you um, yeah you know, as a holster gun again it's a little big for a pocket gun but it feels good in the hand the trigger uh, it might stack a little bit towards the end John thinks it does and I think it does too just a little bit but it gets a little heavier and which might be a good thing as it's about to break uh, so that and the trigger's nice the single action's really nice uh, the sights jump out at you of course with that fiber optic and I like fixed sights you know again this is one of my favorite revolvers you cannot adjust those sights try that will you get you a screwdriver and adjust those can't do it uh, it's, it's a pretty neat little gun we're glad to see them back oh I missed that drink there didn't I uh, uh, there's another cowboy Double action, feels good, feels good. I know what let's do. Let's load it up and uh, let's pump out, out six pretty quickly. I'll just stand shot these for all. Shoot. These, and again, 38 special, wide range of ammo. It's hard to beat 38. All right, this is what you'd be carrying this for. You would, uh, you would uh, have a threat that had to be taken care of or you're going to be gone, all right? And uh, that's the only reason you would engage a threat, okay? Your life is at stake. And uh, you know, you just pull it out and empty it, and it, uh, well, not necessarily empty it, but that's what it's for, close distance, not precision target shooting. Although, I'm sure it would do fine. You know, because a two-inch barrel doesn't necessarily put you at a huge disadvantage other than having a short sight radius. Uh, it's been proven over and over and over that a short barrel can be just about as accurate as a long barrel. It's just that, uh, inherently, that is, it's just that it's harder to maybe align them in as a precise manner if you have a you know, short barrel, if your sights are closer together. That's why people talk about sight radius uh, so often. It's not so much that the actual barrel makes the fire more accurate. It's the fact that your sight is out here, you know, and you're looking through here and your sight is further away. And you folks who have shot much at all, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I could pick this firearm up in a four inch barrel and whoa, I, I would feel like I could just drive nails. And uh, so that's the trade off. That's the trade off, but it's plenty accurate. So let me try to hit another pig. Now that I might know where to hold, I thought I already did. Yeah, just hold a little bit low. Let's try that turkey. <laughs> I like it when they die with drama. That's pretty neat. Oh, let me try a bowling pin here. Yeah. And yeah, Mr. Cowboy, you need one in the hat. Yeah, wherever. Well, I thought I was aiming at the hat. I don't know if I hit it. So that's pretty neat. Uh, I, I don't mean to over over gush about it but i think we're all pleased to see colt come back with a uh, a revolver and get back into the revolver business we saw this at shot show you know it's fairly impressed and good 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 to see it and at, at nra meeting as well and uh so i put in a request for one uh from buds and it's just it's great to have it uh it feels really solid you know it looks solid it's all steel and uh, just just a good carry gun I think this is, if you're going to carry a holster gun, revolver, it's one you'd probably want to look at, okay? And there's a lot of them out there. My gosh, there's all kinds of revolvers, Smith & Wesson, Charter, and all the various companies. The, the Kimber we looked at was pretty impressive and, you know, in a size range that is convenient to carry. Uh, but this is one I think you'd want to take a look at. You know, Ruger makes a lot of nice ones, the LCRs. We've done several of those. And, uh, and you know, in size, it kind of reminds me of those. I guess maybe it's a little, little, little thicker. I don't know. It, heavier, of course, than the LCRs. 
so you got a little weight but then again that's what makes it pleasant to shoot you don't get the feeling let me shoot six more can i uh, you don't get the feeling you're getting much recoil out of it uh, at all especially with that grip i think that's a hogue uh, wraparound grip there uh, I, I mean i could i could shoot it all day it's just to be fun to shoot whereas if you get a little bit smaller with warm ammo that one would be pretty good because that's all steel but you know the little alloy frame guns you don't want to shoot them too many times <laughs> they're okay but uh, it gets old but not this it, it feels fine let's put it back in the holster here and uh yeah i could carry this thing i, I there's just something special about a revolver and with that trigger pull you feel like uh you're 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 not going to flinch you feel like you're going to shoot it well generally at least i do I feel like it i may not <laughs> Like I say, I missed a time or two there messing around, but I could get used to it with some practice. Uh, I might be able to shoot it pretty well, who knows? Now I feel like there's something I forgot to tell you. MSRP 699, two inch barrel. You got your full lug, pretty cool. Uh, you know, again, a return of the Colt Cobra, all steel frame, you know, a nice, nice trigger break. We're clear, of course very nice single action yeah and double action it might stack just a hair but it's nothing that's annoying feels good feels good and of course that grip is is maybe even larger than you need but it uh makes it really shootable okay so I, not a lot of negative unless you don't like revolvers okay uh, for a six shot 38 special you know it's uh kind of that's what it is and uh that's you know, a nice fire the only thing if i could uh, if i was going to if this were my firearm it was going to be mine today and i was going to be carrying it for the next month okay no problem i like it uh but if i could wave a magic wand and give it again the concealed hammer uh yeah i would love that or i could do like i did on this one i could get the grinder out and and take it off myself <laughs> you didn't know i was an artist did you i think i've told you about that grinding that off before <laughs> Did that many many years ago uh, but uh, that would be nice if they come out with a, a centennial type uh, I guess they wouldn't call it that that's a Smith & Wesson uh, brand I suppose but if they could conceal the hammer that would be great uh, uh, I would like it even better so anyway the, the new Colt Cobra if you're looking for a new revolver I'd say that's one that might be worthy of, uh, of taking a look at yeah life is good well I hope you guys enjoyed that because I know I sure did well, I've got you here. I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also do a lot of work with veterans. They accept the GI Bill. They also have hands-on experience, even though it's a distance learning program. Uh, so just wanted to let you guys know about them. Also, you can find them at sdi.edu. Uh, that's the Sonoran Desert Institute. And also, um, just want to let you guys know we have merchandise now. So if you want to uh, buy any Hickok 45 merchandise, you can go over to our store. The link is in the description of every video. And there's also a link kind of on the header of the uh, main uh, channel page, the, the, the main YouTube channel. And so we've got that. And also, if you want to find more of our content in other places, it's everywhere. Um, you can go to full30.com. We have uh, most or all of our videos over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45 Facebook. Um, you can find Hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Hickok45 over there. And then also on Twitter is Hickok45. And then me, the son, the and son, John Hickok. You can find me at uh, Hickok45 and son on YouTube. I also do a podcast called Gun Culture Radio, which you can find on that YouTube channel and also on iTunes. And there's also a John Hickok Facebook page, which you can find the link to on the Hickok 45 and Son channel page. There's a link over there. And uh, that's all I can think of for now. It's a lot to digest. So you're gonna wanna think about that for a little bit and then watch one of these other videos that's like down there or over there somewhere. Um, Cause some of these look pretty good.